Welcome to Electronline. To get a better understanding of organic molecules, it's good to know some of the relationships with the real world, some of the properties, what they're used for. And so let's go through our simple list of alkanes, starting with methane and ending at octane. So we'll do the first eight molecules in the alkane series. Of course, there's many more after that, but it gets more complicated as we go on. Starting with methane, it's the simplest alkane. It has a single carbon, four hydrogen, Notice it has a boiling point of minus 161.6 degrees centigrade, which means it will be in a gas format when it's under room temperature, when it's in a, what we call STP environment, standard temperature and pressure environment. And uh, notice that it's the main component of natural gas. So when you turn on your cooking stove and you turn on the flame, you're basically burning methane. There's a few other chemicals, hydrocarbons, uh, associated or included in that, but the basic component of natural gas is methane. The next element, the next alkane, or I should say the next compound or molecule is ethane. It has two carbons. Notice because of the two carbons, now the boiling point is lowered to minus 88.6 degrees centigrade. That's still very cold. So again, ethane will be in a gaseous form under normal standard temperature and pressure. It uh, has six, uh, two carbons, six hydrogens, it's used to produce ethylene. Now, it turns out ethylene is the most produced organic compound of all compounds. Well over 100 million tons produced every year, and it's primarily produced for polyethylene and agriculture, and we'll see some, some uses for that. The next molecule is propane. Now, notice we use a different format for prop propane. We use H3C for the first part of the chain. Then we have CH2 for the middle part and CH3 for the right part of the chain. Propane means that it has three carbons. The boiling point of propane is minus 42.1 degrees centigrade. So its chemical formula is C3H8. Notice that it's used mostly for fuel, for cooking and heating, and also for engines. But propane is used a lot when natural gas is not available, when you're in far away, out of the way places, out in the mountains, out in the desert. The companies will truck propane to you so you can put it into a big storage can and then use it that way. So when you don't have natural gas lines leading up to the location where you need fuel for cooking or heating. And also we put it into little canisters for backyard barbecue cooking and so forth. It is perfect and sometimes also we use it for small little cooking stoves, portable cooking stoves and put a little canister of uh, propane in there. So notice that because it has a very low boiling point at minus 42, you can use it even in very cold temperatures and it'll remain in gas form until the temperature drops below 42 degrees centigrade. The next chain or the next carbon molecule or what you say alkane molecule has four carbons and notice I use a different notation again. Each corner represents a carbon, so one, two, three, four carbons three carbon, single carbon bonds, so that's presented by a single line. If it's a double carbon bond, then we put two lines there side by side. Notice how the boiling point is minus 0 0.5 degrees centigrade, which means at in freezing conditions, a butane will actually become a liquid, or it can be liquefied readily by pressurizing it. And so butane is typically used in lighters. It's under pressure, so it becomes a liquid, once you allow it to go to standard pressure in temperatures above 0 0.5 degrees centigrade, then it goes into gaseous form and then you can light, you can, uh, light the, the lighter by having a spark, light the gas coming out of it. Notice that this is the first of the alkanes that has enough carbon atoms so that there can actually be two isomers and we'll look later what those isomers are. Notice the chemical form formula is C4H10. The next organic molecule in the alkane set is pentane. Pentane has six or has five carbons and 12 hydrogens. Notice that boiling point is 36.1 degrees centigrade. So under at room temperatures, pentane will actually be a liquid, but above 36 degrees, it becomes a gas. Pentane has three isomers and it's used for fuel and it can also be used as a solvent. The next molecule is hexane. Now notice hexane has six carbons, 14 hydrogens, and its boiling point is 68.7 degrees centigrade. So under most circumstances, those type of temperatures are not seen in nature. 
And it turns out that hexane is actually a significant component of gasoline, and it can also be used as a solvent. Again, since it now has six carbons, there's a possibility of a total of five isomers, five different structures that contain six carbons and 14 hydrogens. The next molecule in the alkane set is heptane. Heptane has seven carbons and 16 hydrogens. Notice that the boiling point is 98.4 degrees centigrade. So typically when you see heptane, you'll see it in a liquid form. Because of the seven carbons, it now has the possibility of nine different isomers, I mean nine different structures containing seven carbons and 16 hydrogens. Yes, we are going to learn how to come up with all nine isomers in heptane, just like we will in coming up with isomers of the other molecules. Heptane has a lot of different uses. It's used in paint, in coatings, in rubber cement. It can also be used as solvent. They typically tend to be nonpolar solvents. And it's a minor component in gasoline. Notice the octane rating for heptane is zero. So that's called the zero point rating and the octane rating. Octane rating stands for research octane number. So zero is very low, so you don't want too much heptane in your gasoline, otherwise you'll have a very low octane rating, and so just a minor component in gasoline. Let's now jump to octane. Octane has eight carbons, 18 hydrogens. Notice the boiling point is 125.7 degrees centigrade, which is quite high, and yes, octane is something that can be put into gasoline. However, it turns out that the octane rating of the straight chain which is called N-octane, N stands for normal, the normal 8-carbon chain of octane, has a minus 10-octane rating. So if you add this kind of component to your gasoline, you would have a very bad octane rating. You don't want a minus 10, of course. Notice because you have 8 carbons, there's a possibility of 18 isomers, and yes, we're going to learn how to find all 18 of them. The isomer 224 trimethylpentane has an octane rating of 100. Now, this is one of the 18 isomers of octane. Notice 224, meaning there are three methyl functional groups attached to the remaining five carbon chain. Since it, the remaining five carbon chain is only five carbons, it's called pentane. So three functional groups, each containing a carbon, attached to a five carbon chain. That's a total of eight carbons. Therefore, it's an isomer of octane. Notice where they're attached. The first two methyl groups are attached to the second carbon in the pentane chain, and the third one is connected to the fourth carbon in the five pentane chain. That particular isomer of, of octane has an octane rating of 100, which is, of course, very good, and that's what you want. So this is the main component in gasoline in order to get the higher octane rating required for automobiles to run correctly. We'll learn later on in another video how the octane rating is used in coming up with the type of gasoline that we want that has the correct octane rating. Obviously, you don't want the straight chain octane. You want this isomer of octane to end up with a high octane rating. Oh, by the way, in case you're not sure, that octane rating has actually nothing to do with the amount of energy you get out of gasoline, but it does have to do with how quickly it can ignite, the ignitability of the material, which means that if it ignites too soon under heat, typically caused by compressing the gasoline or the, or the gasoline air mixture, you can have an early burn, which means you'll get knocking in your engine. So we'll talk a little bit more about what octane rating is and what it does and why we need it. So here you have some basic ideas of the basic kind of alkane molecules, starting from methane with one carbon and ending with octane that has eight carbons. There's, of course, many more, but we'll have to attack those one at a time. So hopefully that gives you a better feel of what the alkanes are and what the various properties are of the eight first, eight first molecules in the alkane group. Now notice what's important. To notice is that the boiling point tends to increase as you increase the number of carbons in the chain. There'll be some slight differences in the properties of the isomers in each of the uh, molecules. You'll see that as well. And uh, we'll get some more details about how to calculate the octane rating. So that gives us a good start. Stay tuned and we'll learn a lot more about organic chemistry.